School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Alberta Canola Producers Commission. Okay, so we're here with Clint and we are talking uh, what happened to canola in 2012. And overwhelmingly, the crop really struggled with various diseases and pests. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, sclerotinia first. What are some of the things that uh, farmers can do uh, for sclerotinia management in 2013? Well, number one would be to, to uh, sort out what is their yield targets. And I would say for any growers that are targeting yields more than 40 bushels per acre, regardless of where you farm, in Peace River down to the Red River Valley, um, if you're targeting 40 bushels or better, you should be budgeting a uh, sclerotinia fungicide in, in, that, uh, in, your, in your plans for the crop. And the reason for that is um, sclerotinia shows up wherever uh, there's moisture. And we don't really know where that moisture is going to be, but uh, it could be in southwest Saskatchewan, it could be in uh, northeast uh, uh, Manitoba, it could be anywhere. And so if you're targeting higher yields, you need to pencil in a, uh, and, and budget and even purchase your, your fungicide uh, prior to the application phase. And if it happens to dry out at that period, well, then don't apply it. But I would say that's, that's job number one in order to being successful at managing this disease. Um, Second one would be to uh, do uh, try to, to choose varieties that don't lodge and, and try to prevent uh, that from, uh, from occurring. Uh, there are some sclerotinia tolerant varieties as well that are available on the market. Those look like they'll be good tools for helping to reduce the, the disease a certain amount, but if the risk looks like it's going to be very high for sclerotinia, uh, you do try to need to sort out how much moisture you've had and, and how much is going to come during that flowering period. If you can do that well, then you should be able to determine whether or not you need to apply a fungicide. And that's your best bet for controlling this disease at, at this day and age so far. Now, uh, lots, lots of questions, questions, even though we're here, we're at the <coughs> Green Expo held at Agrivision this year, and uh, so it's a Saskatchewan audience, but a lot of questions around club root. Farmers are definitely uh, worried about it. Um, what can you tell us a little bit about club root in Saskatchewan right now? Well, fortunately, it's it's not widespread. We do know of a, a few fields in the province where, which are positive for, for club root, and they're under club root management plans to prevent that uh, disease from spreading to the, to the local uh, area. Um, but it is a, a significant risk. There is a lot of equipment that moves in and out of Alberta, whether it's farm machinery or oil patch machinery, whatever. Uh, there is a risk that, that uh, club root could be transported into the, uh, into the province. And so for growers in, in this province, it, it is very important that they try sorting out where they've exposed themselves to risk. Either it's purchasing used equipment out of uh, the central Alberta area or they do have uh, oil patch leases on their land which potentially could be spreading it as well. It's just to sort out uh, where those risks are and if they uh, do think that they have been exposed to that risk then they need to go out and do some scouting to determine whether or not it's present on their farm. If they can identify that disease early, right, especially when it's just been first introduced to their farming operation, then they've got a lot better uh, opportunity to, to control it and hopefully it doesn't, uh, the cat doesn't get out of the bag as it has happened in Alberta already. Now, uh, black leg, obviously a, a big concern. Uh, definitely some discussion about uh, perhaps ident identification tripping up some, some farmers and even agronomists. Has black leg infection changed? Has it become more subtle? What are, what are you seeing in the landscape? Well, I think that the, we're, we're kind of reaping the benefits of our own success at managing this disease over the past 15, 20 years. Uh, the varieties have been so good with the, with the resistance that they've had that growers just don't even pay attention to this disease anymore and so we've lost the skill set necessary to identify it and, and that's coming at a bit of a cost because we do know that there are fields out there that have high levels of black leg again and, uh, and they're being misidentified as another disease and so the treatments for controlling black leg is quite different than, uh, than some of those other diseases and so you guys can make mistakes like that so we're, we're trying to do a bit of an education uh, campaign over this winter to make sure that people can identify black leg successfully because like club root, the sooner that you can identify it as being present in your farming operation, then you can take mitigation uh, uh, procedures to, to try reducing that disease from becoming a bigger problem than it is already. Now we know that you can certainly scout stubble for, for incidents of black leg uh, once the crop is off, but when in the growing season would farmers be scouting for it and potentially spraying? Most of your diseases, the best time to scout for them to identify uh, how much of a disease problem you've had and how much potential yield you've lost is right at swathing time. That's the ideal time to identify club root, black leg, sclerotinia, the three big ones. Um, 
So uh, if you were to go out now and try identifying black, like well, there's some other things that can kind of confuse that a little bit. Alternaria growth through as it's decomposing that that plant tissue can uh, kind of mess up that that successful evaluation. But right at swathing time, that's the best time to go. Okay, and if you were to spray for black, like when would that window be? The best, uh, well, if you look at the uh, the fungicides that are the habit on the label, they're between two leaf and uh, and uh, I think it's six leaf. So if you can get in that wi window, you do need to uh, to try assessing what your risk is uh, prior to you actually observing very much of it. If you're finding a couple of lesions out there and you think that the that you, the risk was there that for for black leg to develop, well, then it's probably not a bad idea to get out with a fungicide. Great, thanks so much, Clint. My pleasure.